Hey, welcome back to Can We Play Already? Uh, we are doing part two of episode three of the Heroes of Ultimate Crossing, where we are just recovering from a deadly battle with a dangerous divine beast uh, that everyone uh, convinced to leave. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go through a bit of it, uh, the aftermath here. Um, Silvara has been convinced to leave. Um, as far as Travin's told you, uh, it seems like she is close to the end of her very, very long lifespan as a kind of divine protector of a sacred place. Um, she definitely went a little mad here. As she takes her leave of you, um, she takes a moment with her new young <laughs> divine snake creature that you uh, that Welltide so lovingly hatched uh, with song. Um, and she, she earnestly tells them um, this place no longer needs your protection. She's like, I can't remember even why we are here protecting it. She's like, find some place worthwhile uh, to protect and make that your new home. And that's what she tells to this thing. And then she leaves it with you here and she walks off into the desert ruins uh, and turns into a small songbird again and flies off into the distance even further west. Um, and that's the last you see of Silvara. Hmm. Do we just have a snake baby now? I guess we do. Mm -hmm. I'm like stroking like its head, like giving it little pats. What should we name it? Um, <laughs> you have a name? Yeah, does does it speak English? Um, I would say not yet, no. <laughs> it's it a baby. Learn. Um, it can learn. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems to just be like small and it seems to be healthy and it's not craving anything or crying for food or anything right now. Um, it's got two little tiny wings, but it can't really fly. Mm -hmm. oh, um, Travin's more concerned with you. And as he like gets some water and stuff, he's like, so why are you here? Like, why did you come this far to the, out into the desert to this awful place? I came looking for you. Yeah. A you're, little bit. You're one of the reasons we're here. And we also heard about this place. Someone in Valto's Crossing got like killed over it. Um just like to find that information as far as we know so we were also looking yeah. for treasure if there was any treasure in the vicinity <laughs> yeah Andrew was really interested in treasure yeah. um <laughs> he's like I uh, oh, he is very much the treasure um I just like that earnesty um Travin looks at you he's uh really shocked that someone was murdered over this and he's like then I'm right then this is this is important, and what's here is really worthwhile then. And he's like, all oh, my research might be right. He's like, I think there's something here that could help save the water shrines. Um, and he gets you all to uh, kind of stand back near the edges of the, of the room. And he goes into the center and looks at the floor a bit and, and kind of looks at the carvings. And then he casts a spell around him that's just... Uh, a whirlwind of wind around him within like 20 feet in all directions. Um, and it just kind of, you cover your eyes with your robes and stuff and, and the wind just blows all the sand away from the floor and reveals like a beautiful mosaic floor with all kinds of different patterns on it and stuff like that and uh, different markings. Um, and as he does, it, it, as he's blowing the sand away and the floor is getting more and more revealed, um, you see that there's a like round staircase leading further underneath this place um, that's, that's leading to another floor below this one in the tower. Um, and he like, after the wind dies down and the sand dies down, he's like, this is what I came here for. This is like the trove of this tower has been laying here, like unknown because this beast has been guarding it for so long. Um, your mother is very worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is very true. The spell casting like exerts him. He's like, I've come so close. We have to look. We have to find it. I mean, like, you okay? But like, should should we like collect ourselves a little bit first? Mm -hmm. like, you look like you need like a little bit of medical assistance. Um, he's not looking great. Um, with a little bit of water, he was able like to cast that spell and stuff and get back. To and he's seeming to walk on his own now, and he's like. I just, I think we should look at this first and okay. oh. and go into it. Take your belt, I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very, he's like, come on, we feel, like he's young and he's like eager about this despite being very tired and worn and a little like, he's like wrapped his wounds. You know. How about we have 
Andri and Kanaima go in first, and then you stay, you know, next to me and Tangle. And just, we go after. Like we'll yeah. we'll go, but we just don't want you to like go right in right away and potentially get hurt. So he'll agree to you two you taking the lead. Okay. Yeah, and That's like good. as you do you, this this but, room, yeah. I definitely want to take a rest before we continue on. It's like an hour. I'm fine with that. I mean, this thing's been here for thousands yeah. of years or something. I'll make you a DM promise that this won't hurt you. <laughs> okay. But like... And we'll take a rest after. Okay. Just for pacing. Okay. Come on, let's okay. go. It's a treasure room. I'm trying to give you treasure to reward you for such a good battle. Okay. Um, <laughs> The room below <laughs> is like, it's not a very tall room, but it's as wide as the tower, it seems like it's different. Uh, it, it's, it's very dark, but um, where there's cracks in the floor above, there's streams of light and small like waterfalls of sand pouring in a little bit still Ooh, from above. Picturesque. Yeah, and it's, it's really gorgeous. It looks like it's some kind of sacred room. There's carvings everywhere on the walls uh, in a language that none of you speak, um, so you wouldn't recognize it, not in Druidic. Um, <laughs> I was sure waiting. like a little druidic. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, all right, um, you all find uh, you find scattered amongst the, the ruins um, a small chest that has five uh, tiny gems in it. it. Takes up one slot to carry all five gems. Um, there's also um, some other small like coin chests and small lock boxes. You find a total of 500 silver and 30 gold. Um, 100 coins takes up an item spot, though. So this is where things get dicey. Mm. I just heard that great groan. <laughs> and then five gems. Okay. So here's what you got. 30 gold, 500 silver. You don't have to take it all, obviously. Um, ah. And five gems. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, Ted's going to ask uh, ta Tra 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 Tavern. Tavern. Um, <laughs> I hate you all. I'm so sorry. I'm bad with names. Uh, Traven, if he recognizes any of like the writings in the walls or if there's like something, like if he's yeah. finding a thing that's special here. He does. He says it's in Primordial. Um, and it's um, it's referencing like the elements and like the the gods of of the different elements and stuff. And he's like, there should be a relic here um, that's said to be passed down from them. Um, that's really powerful. Um, one of you, hmm. I was gonna say you also find, and you can decide who wants this. But it's, uh, I think only the sorcerer could use this item. You also find among the ruins um, in, a, in a parchment case, um, it's one slot to take, but a spell scroll of invisibility. Ooh. Ooh. And on it is the ancient secrets of a spell that turns someone invisible, castable by anyone with that on their spell list, which I believe is the sorcerer right now. Um, and that's the magic item you find. You also find, uh, as you like turn the corners and wander in into the place that would be directly under the center of the tower, in this round room, there's like a gleaming small crystal um, on a pedestal. And Travin looks at it and it's engraved with more of these little carvings and stuff. And he's like, this isn't it, this is the wrong one. And he seems really frustrated and he's like, these carvings are like air carvings. This was supposed to be like a water stone. And it was supposed to help me save the different places. And he like falls to his knees and he's like, this is what I risk my life for, and it's not even the right stone. And he's really furious at himself. So, like, was there a guarantee that this would be the water stone? Like, why is it the air? Um, he said that he's, he says that he didn't know for sure, but he had a hunch. And, like, his research was pointing him to that this would be the one. Um, but it looks like he was mistaken and he's like furious at himself. And he's like, I knew this wasn't worth the risk. My mom was right. We wasted all this time for nothing. We have nothing to show for it. Well, Ty tries to comfort him, like pats his <laughs> back. Mom's all and right. And it's just like, okay. A lot of the time. <laughs> we, we still found something important. Maybe there's a water stone nearby or you can study and find out where the water stone might be. Maybe this air stone is a clue. He he did say, he does like admit that he's like someone you said someone killed someone to find this right yeah. yeah 
And he like he takes out a page of his own uh, research notes, and he has like uh, drawings of four different stones, one for each kind of ele primordial element. And he's like, these are these are very powerful stones. And he's like, I know that they hold a lot of of great power in them. But he's like, I don't know why anyone else would want to risk their life finding it because, like, he's like, I'm not even sure all four of them exist anymore. He's like, these are really ancient relics, and. Like, look at where this one is. It's in a ruin that's been torn apart and, and, and been uninhabited for ages. Um, he's like, I'm not sure the other three even exist. Um, well, they must exist if this one does. You're so optimistic. I love this. Mm -hmm. Out of character, I love mm -hmm. well died so much. Mm -hmm. That small phrase, they must exist if this one does. Mm -hmm. There is no evidence of that whatsoever, but well, that is I such believes a, it. Yeah, it yeah. Is like you made me believe it. <laughs> um, what what do these stones do? What would what would you get if you found a water stone? Like what what magic does it have? Um, he kind of looks at this one too, and he's like, "They're supposed to be." Um, he's like, "All I know is they're made by like primordial spirits, and they're." they're supposed to contain an extreme amount of power, but he's like looking at this one, he's like, I don't even know if that's true. Like maybe they've gone dormant, maybe they're not good anymore, maybe the magic has left them. Cause he's like, I don't even know what I'd do with this one. I thought I'd know when I found it, what they could do, but like, he's kind of stumped. Uh, may I see it? He puts it in one of your normal human hands? No, at their bird talents. Great. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do an arcana check. Yeah, what do you want to, what's your intent? I want to discern what sort of powers it has. and or Activate it. <laughs> Maybe not yet, but I mean, like, what, what powers are within, what does yeah, it yeah, do, sure. what is it, you know. Um, ooh, let's forget. I like how you weren't going to check if it wasn't good. I was going to say, we could guidance to do that, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, Arcana's intelligence, right? Yeah, this would be intelligence. And if yeah, you yeah. have like okay. proficiency, do you want your guidance it. die? Well, it's uh, fifteen already. Does that what does that get me? Well, it's a um, fifteen. Yeah. Do you want to use the guidance die? You can. It's free. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? I'm gonna roll my burnout 19. for it. Uh, yeah, I'm good. All right. A nineteen. Nice. Yeah. Um, not quite, unfortunately. What? It's Ooh. a very rare relic. Right. I was oh. looking for a good, a good roll. Nineteen's a good roll. So. Tingle's also not sure. Yeah, uh, um, you're not sure how to. I'm trying to see if there's any thing. way I can like add more to this. I'm gonna say that like this is a little bit outside of your day to day kind of knowledge too. Like okay. this isn't like identifying a regular magic item. This thing might be a little harder. Okay, I hand it back to him and say, "Yes, this is a stone." <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, you find the rest of the treasure here. It seems to be all that's available. Um, who has room to carry any of this? Well, so do we? Is there a list of how much space everything takes up? Because I'm looking at my item list and I don't know what my big ones are. Oh, um, I made yours so that you see how like multiple, some of them take up multiple slots. Oh, this slots. is how much spots I do. Oh, yeah, no. everything else is one. I see. How many slots do you have open still, Jace? Three. Ooh, I also have three. Actually, three. don't um, you have eighteen? Um. So. I the ones that like took up double or whatever, like I crossed out numbers to like make my max higher. Oh. I'm doing it in a weird way. But, but they I also take up double slots. there too. What? But they also take up two slots as well. Um, something else. It made sense when I wrote it out. <laughs> and how many slots should we have? Eight. Oh, it depends 18. on. I have eighteen, but it depends on your strength. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, each hundred coins is one slot. The thirty gold, if it's added to gold or split. That's fine. Um, How are we splitting so those up? Then? So Welty well, can hold some stuff. She's got four slots. So it's essentially thirty-five gold, right? No, it's th thirty gold pieces and five hundred silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, for the purposes of dividing it up by four. Well, can everyone hold a hundred silver? No, but the people who could hold. Well, then more... have party gold and just share with each other. Yeah, well, Tide's not like a greedy person either, so she's not really worried about hanging out to too much money. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's shiny more Same. so than the actual. So value. Tingle would go for the silver pieces then, because there's more. But Jason I would, knows I, that I, gold is worth more. No, Tingle wouldn't go for the gems because they're shiny and like yeah, cool. We should go for the like gems. Tingle. We should. So 
find out how much those gems are worth, and then divide that Let's much money up each, in between mm -hmm. everyone. We don't know if they're the same. I mean, you could just, money. like, sell them and keep this as, like, a campaign fund and stuff and work as a team and just have, like, you know, write on a scrap piece of paper <laughs> how much money you're getting from your treasures, and every time someone needs to buy something, be like, okay, well, Tide's using this much for this magic thing, or, like, mm -hmm. Kanaima needs mm -hmm. new cartography tools or whatever, yeah. or brewing tools or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You could just do it that way and just take it, like, keep a track of this and take it back and be friends. Well, that doesn't sound good. good. <laughs> yeah, Andrea. It's a hard nice pitch guy. for a D&D &D game, I know, and I'm really trying it. Um, I'm down with that. Yeah, sure. Probably. I might enforce it just good. to speed things up. Yeah, so yeah. who has room for everything? I would never steal from you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a slot for and five those gems? precious children? Uh, well, it's just, you know, some of us one, have one slot for all five. And some uh, of us don't. Baltai can so so gems. Baltai's got five gems. Money is a more pressing concern for some of us. Who's got slots for 100 silver? So how many slots should I have at I 13 strength and being a halfling? How many does, did I write down? How many you have in total there above? Um, above your uh, above your inventory, it might say sixteen. Ooh. Oh, okay. I'm beyond that somehow. Oh, are you? Yeah, apparently. Um, we can adjust that when you get back. Okay. Yeah, yeah sounds good. <laughs> um, I think it's fifteen plus your strength mod, which is one. Mm. Yeah. So Wildtide still has uh, three more slots. So take three hundred silver. All right. So now she's at eighteen. I've got three slots. Take two hundred silver. That's two slots. Who wants to hold the thirty gold? Uh, I can probably do that. Thirty gold for you. Because yeah, if it's if it keeps your gold under a hundred still, does. yeah, you're fine. I can, um, yeah, I can give up items to make a slot open, but. All right. It seems like you got it figured out. Um, and Jace, you got a slot for the scroll. Yep. I, I've got two questions too. While we're still in this area. Yeah, please. Um, what does it look like this ruins? Were they a temple? What was it built for? Can I get a sense of that? Looking yeah, around? it does seem religious in nature. Okay. For sure, this this seems like temple or kind of thing, like a monastery almost. Can I study what's around it all to get a feel for what the religion was? Or Yeah, like I make um, an intelligence check and add religion to it. Okay. If you have religion. I do indeed. Uh, 21. All right, yeah, um, this is really old and where the carvings aren't completely worn away and stuff. Um, yeah, you see this is kind of too, it looks like it's from a time when maybe they were less minor gods and more major gods. Like mm. now there's a lot of different gods in the domain of like air or earth or fire. Um, it's kind of very like Romanesque, like there's, there's you know, lots of subcategories mm. and small gods. Um, and that's like more common, but this seems to be like more referencing just like the main four. This place was obviously like seems a little dedicated to the primordial gods of errors a little more than others, which makes sense as to why they're stone this year. So Andrew tells the group, this place is very old. Yeah, like this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. Like this would be probably before like the desert got too awful. Mm -hmm. Is there any like like map, like like kind of like something carving, like indicating where other <laughs> temples might be. That's a good idea. Ooh, yeah. like, um, unfortunately not. Um, okay. However, I, Travin does agree to, if you are looking for something like that, he's like, I do, like, I, I've been researching this place for a while. Like, I could help you research where the next place is too. And oh, where, where other ones of these might lie. This is, this is an excellent idea. Yeah. That is ideal. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Out of character too, like, or out of DM mode, um, on your long rest, you can also spend some time researching stuff. Mm. Sweet. Cool. Are okay. we hanging on to the stone, or is he? Um, do you insist on it? He's not attached to it. He's like, I have no use for this. Do you think you should, like, come, maybe come back with us to Valto's Crossing as well to do some research? You might have some more resources over there. Can uh, um, hang out in the water bear's shrine. Might be safer if people are... His eyes light up at that, and he's like, yeah, they do not like me in Tarash, where we've been. Mm -hmm. Like, they are not fond of me there. They're the, getting real mad at my stuff lately. The only little caveat is don't do any little experiments right there, like, right away. Like, let's look at the gem stuff first, just in case, because we don't want to necessarily compromise the water. That's fair. He's like, you know, kind of rolls his eyes, but he's like, yeah, I get it. People are scared. It won't make the same mistake again. If also, check find... in with your mom, you know? Yeah. Maybe tell <laughs> like, her you're well, going we're gonna somewhere. Go, yeah, we're going to go to really like place to go first. Home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and um, maybe we can find a different wellspring that's not being used or something to, you know, do some of those experiments on. I like that. Another time. Yeah, he's he's cool for that. He likes that quite a bit. Mm. Um, is there anything else you guys want to take care of here? I would like to see if we can gather the pieces of the egg um, that looks like it kind of melted. Oh well, yeah. never mind. Yeah, like with the healing potions, beautifully like melted away. Okay. Mm. No treasure for you there. I wanted more treasure. <laughs> but that's my know. spin on it. That like the greatest treasure that attracted so many people here and had so many rumors wasn't really a treasure at all. It mm. was literally like an egg. Mm. Yeah. And the greatest treasure was underneath it all. And the oh. friends we made along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like the this friendship. snake. Yeah. 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 Have you put thought like into snake. what you want to where you want to take the snake thing? Oh, the snake is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that that wasn't an answer to that question at all. But like you needed me to know it and it was the answer to that question yes. for you. It's our mascot now. You're like, this snake is going with me. That's all I know. It's the going place, with us. The place it needs to protect. Tangle is, is not me. eating it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my body no is problems. a temple and it's a temple, temple that, that needs that, to be protected. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, you make it, like, it takes a, a while to get back to town. Um, it's, like, about noon when we're doing this, uh, when you're, when you're uh, starting to leave. It's been, you've spent the morning fighting and stuff and recuperating, exploring this kind of old tomb, um, or not tomb, uh, old, like, treasure vault. Um, it does take a night to, like, a day on the road. You, like, rest halfway to Tarosh, and you get there around, like, mid-morning the next day. Um... We're going to. Oh, we all have rations and stuff too. Um, I want to kind of calculate how much you'll use up, but um, I think more importantly is when you get back to Tarosh, um, you have some time to bring Travin to their home um, and reunite them with their mom. And he explains what went on, and he has a really hard talk with her where he's like, I'm going to go to Volta's Crossing. Like, they obviously don't like me here, and I can't continue to do my research. And she's really angry about it, but, like, she's very thankful you brought him back. And she kind of looks mm -hmm. at you, and she's like, you're taking him there? She's like, if anything happens yeah. to him, I'll, I'll find you. No, you will not. I'm sure you will. He will be safe with us. I promise. <laughs> very different sides of my table today. <laughs> you will. I know that my mom would find anyone who did anything to me. Right? You are pathetic and cannot fly. You would never find me. Oh my God, just give the mother a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know a mom. <laughs> they will. Um, Moms are ruthless. You, you, you just met a mom that almost. She almost killed you. Yeah. <laughs> Until I told her to stop. Well, to be, to be fair, that was a flying mom too. I this mean, is a regular. Are all <laughs> moms flying? Mom. Moms uh -huh. can fly. I don't think every they know. What my companions what? are trying to say is that your son will be perfectly safe with us. I have an earnest question. What's Tangle's relationship with his mother? That is yet to be revealed. Hmm. Why do you hate your mom so much? I don't hate my mom. I don't know. I'm getting some vibes, Tangle. Uh, those are probably fleas in your disgusting fur. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe they're the mites. That are coming oh, from you. I've got a mites for you. One and two. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tangle took a very interesting direction. Tangle is going to punch the rogue? No. That is from, Stop talking about my mother. Let's that go. Is from Boston? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, lovely. Oh, Lord. <laughs> really? He, he seems very, like, touchy about the subject. Okay, we'll drop it for now. <laughs> really gritty stuff we're getting into. Are we are we supposed to pick up Kalisor on the way back? Yeah, right. yeah I was going to say, um, you head over to the water temple, or water uh, bear shrine, oh, Zelda for a moment. Actually, before before we talk to Kalisor, um, Andrew will ask Venora, or ask ask uh, Ta Traven if he's heard the name Venora at all before, or if he knows anything about that. He doesn't ring a bell for him either. Yeah. Venora is the person that was looking for Travin. He's or? yeah, or the she's, person Kalisor she's, is working. Yeah, for him, exactly. Right? So, so Travin, just to give you some context for this, um, there was there was an old man who tried to break into your house that we um, 
we subdued. Um, Understood. I will kill him in a duel. Um, no, 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 no. You don't have to no, do that. No, I, I have turned of age recently. I am an adult now. I can handle this. I got it. No. Uh, Good for you, son. <laughs> That's a great attitude to have. No. <laughs> this gentleman Please has actually him. agreed to help us like locate who was looking for you. So it's, I it's scared him enough not, already. Not Don't worry him. about it. Yeah. <laughs> you did. You had the intimidation. You're scared of us. If anything, maybe you two can work together a little bit and we can figure out who this menorah is. is. He also was an elderly gentleman in a pretty desperate you, state. I don't yeah. know if he's I'm really old man. All the better. <laughs> I will definitely win. Well, <laughs> it, there's no real glory in an easy... If I had any battle. honor left to lose in this town, I would, I would say you're crazy, but I get it. He's, he's willing to not fight this guy on sight. Okay. Well, we'll, okay. we'll be going back with him and then investigating that a little bit further. Um, you go to the uh, water temple, um, to or water temple. shrine, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really tough for me to differentiate this from Zelda, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, while you're there, uh, I was just looking up the name of him. I think it's Jovan. Yes. Yeah, with the uh, water shrine. Um, yeah, Jovan. Uh, he brings. Or he, he meets you at the front. He talks to you. He's like, "How was your How was your journey to the desert? Did you Did you find the answers you were looking for?" Our answer is right here. I like reveal our beautiful like snake friend. He like takes a step back for a second. This thing's very otherworldly to him. He's like, "Is it safe?" Definitely safe. This this baby. little fella is super friendly, newly born baby. Very it's mm. it's her best friend. My best friend. Alda. <laughs> Moving on. Well, Tide um, has already named this creature. What's the name? Alda. Great. Um, it's, it's got water. Joven's like, we kept cows or here, but do you mind me asking what you're doing? The mother has approached us, uh, Travin's mother. Eyes Traven out of the corner of his eyes while he's in the back there. And he's like, Our, his mother has approached us asking us to bring him to the town militia for justice. Um, what do you plan on doing with him? We were planning to actually have him help us find the person that put him up to this so that we can prevent further tears and uh, heartache. He kind of gives a sign. He's like, I don't know if I like if I give him over to you to avoid arrest, it might spur some kind of riot against us. And like this town is already like not a great place for us. I, I don't know if this is just gonna infuriate them more. Well, do the, like does the town militia actually know about him yet? Um, he says I've convinced the, his, uh, Travin's mother to not go to the militia yet and to keep this under wraps. So unless there were any other witnesses, no one should know about it. Hmm. I think we should be okay with that then, because she sort of agreed to let us do this, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. We can bring him back to the militia after he helps us find this, uh, spooky Venora person. He's, he's, uh, he's really, like, kind of scratching his head about this. Um, you make a roll for it. Um, it sounds like you're just trying to... I don't know. It sounds like straight-up persuasion. Sure. So we'll do, like, a charisma persuasion roll. Cool. Does so anyone want to guide my... Per- <laughs> yeah. Or does anyone want to help? I, can, I, I mean, go- I can guide. it'd be obvious if you cast a spell for him okay, to do better, well, I, I think. Won't cast a spell. Um, I'll, I'll just help with my, you know... What do you help with? Just flutter your feathers. Yeah, what is it? The what's the you know that you help with? I'm very curious. Yes, I've got 17 charisma. If I... Well, you'll just be giving advantage. All right. Okay. So advantage? Yeah, um, Jason, you roll a second die. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, charisma, 14. so plus one, 15. All right. Um, he, like, kind of looks at you. He's like, I can give you, like... Uh, a single week. Okay. But if you don't have him back by then, it's going to be... I'm going to have to tell them what happened. Okay. I don't think I can buy off... I, I don't think I can, like, convince his mother to wait any longer than that. And is that enough time for us to get back to Valto's Crossing? Yeah. And then yeah. come back I afterwards? Think so. Yeah, it takes okay. a couple days, but... Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Um... 
as you're talking about this, um, you hear some, like, uh, a few shouts in the streats. And, um, again, Tarosh, Tarosh is, like, very smoggy and kind of, like, ash-filled and just has a lot of mines and uh, smiths in the town. Um, but amongst the usual clamor, you, you think you hear a few shouts, like, a few louder than normal, and you see a few people run past the entrance to the water shrine. And someone stops, and they're like, it's on the horizon. There's a giant storm on the way. And he's like, if... Like, it, it, we have to do something about it. And as you look over, you see in the horizon, for sure, just, like, a wall of that, like, the, the sky and the ground seem to blend together as, like, a giant sandstorm out in the distance uh, to the north. It seems to be, like, rolling on its way towards um, this town. Um, um, goodbye, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this wind gem can do something. Yeah. Yeah. So, we... Show the wind gem to the to oh, Jovan. Yeah, with the jab. Yeah. Help us! Help us! Can this stop the storm? <laughs> um, he looks at it. And he's like, he kind of like sees the ancient writings on it, and he's like, "Stop the storm! Is this could be what brought it here? Where did you find this?" And he's like furious about it. In a tower basement. <laughs> yeah. Where the um, same thing was. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, this might be something too powerful and it might be affecting the environment around us. Um, he like hands it back to him. He's like, you need to go. You need to get out of here. You need to get as far away as you can. Um, can we outrun a storm? You can at least get it away from this town so it doesn't destroy it. Okay, I'll take okay. it back and put it in my pack. <laughs> okay. Um, Tango, you can fly really fast. That's true. You go ahead. Just, Just run. Fly. fly. Run quick. Fly as quickly as you can. Where, where? Don't go straight to Valto's Crossing, though. Um, oh, where can he go if we just leave it out in the open? If it's this powerful, that's that's. I not mean, it's also either. just like some dude's guess about it, right? Like he's superstitious of it, is what you're getting. So uh, try like. He might not even be correct. Yeah, mm. let's try flying in a direction and see if maybe it follows you in that direction. Yeah, see if the giant wall of sandstorm follows you. <laughs> I think that's a logical idea. Andrew, Andrew grabs Traven and is just like, you're the only person who knows anything about this. What is, is the stone the cause of this? What do you know about the stone? Um, he's like, I've never heard anything like this happen before. He's like, I don't... I, I don't think it would. He's like, I don't, I think this just might be a sandstorm. I think this might be a normal occurrence, but, but like, they're getting worse lately. And like, nobody seems to want to listen to me when I tell them that, but. Uh, well, Ty just has like a light bulb go off, but Tango was going to do something. Okay, so. yeah, like, I, I, when he says that, I'll like turn to the other person and be like, it is okay. This is not the cause. You are wrong. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, do you want to like, are you trying to persuade, or are you just just doing a thing? Uh, no, no, I'm trying to persuade. Like, I'm just, like, stating it in my, like, obtuse tango way, but, like... Like, are you yeah. trying to, like, comfort? Yeah, you know what? Let's roll that charisma persuasion. All right. I know that's what you got. Um, it wasn't a great roll, though, so, I mean, nine. nine? Yeah, it, he doesn't seem to be calmed down very much. Okay. Well... well tied? So, yeah, well, all of this talk about, like... Things while Ty just like remember suddenly, huh, I met this really cool tall orc lady, and she was talking about this kind of stuff. I think like they'll know what's going on. Maybe we can take the gem to them. Mm -hmm. He's like, if you think you have some solution to this, um, it, he kind of looks out and he's like, the storm's coming from the north. If, you, if you're headed back to Valto's Crossing or if you're headed out of here, you could probably, like, we've got a good, this range, like, at least a couple hours before it hits. We'll take as many of the people off the streets into the water shrine as we can, and we'll get other people into their basements, into their homes. We survived sandstorms before. This town will be okay. Um, you can tell he's, like, half hoping that. Like, he, he it is a big storm as far as, like, his eyes and demeanor are saying, but he's saying this and trying to hold up, like, a... Astronomy, but he's like, if you can find answers to this kind of stuff, I mean, you're better off doing that than staying here. Okay. Um, can we outrun this storm? Um, 
He's looking at it like directionally and it looks like if you, yeah, like it looks like you've got a chance for it if you book it. Okay, let's let's go to Valto's Crossing and then I can talk with Nyavara again and we can talk about this gemstone and figure out maybe we'll, we'll go on a pilgrimage to these, uh, our orc friends. We'll see if the storm more. moves at the very least. Yeah. 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 That'll tell us something. Okay, so let's make haste with uh, our three new friends. <laughs> Alda and uh, Traven and... And uh, Kalisor. And Kalisor. Yeah. When we go to travel again, you can take like a fast pace and um, in order to run it. It just means you won't forage or anything like that, but mm -hmm. it could be something pretty solid. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and... Uh, I think as you're ready to leave the town, that's a solid place to call it a night. Um, with the storm at your heels, uh, getting it closer and closer to Taraj. And we haven't short rested yet, have we? No. Okay. Mm. We have not. But we've long rested. No. no, no. Long rested. God, it was so close. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so close, you're like, maybe if I just pull this one over his eyes. That's <laughs> right. A long rest, like we'd basically do the try and find out who Venora is thing, yeah. send that person back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then long rest. That's kind of what my plan yeah. is for your long rest. You can even just like do the research and stuff during your long rest mm -hmm. um, to give you a little bit of a heads up. Long rest will be, you can sell your gems and stuff. You can pick a lifestyle and pay for it and it'll decide how you start off with your conditions and how your health starts off for the next uh, game. Um, and then you'll be able to do something like research or... I don't know, run a business or mingle with nobles, whatever you kind of want to do. You can even rest and relax and stuff like that, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's fun. Um, one thing we didn't do is I, Tangle went down to zero mm -hmm. HP, right? I did. Ooh. So you have a bit of an injury. No. Um, <laughs> which I assume we'll say is bandaged up. Um, yeah. Which is at least good. Uh, I, but yeah. Yeah. I dropped from the, the squeezing, so maybe, I don't know, if you theme them around that. I'd say, like, yeah, maybe, uh, like, a rib or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, da -da -da. Do I put that under wounds or permanent injuries? Um, it's wounds. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'd say you have a permanent, you have a lingering wound to your uh, ribs. Okay. Um. And will, like, a long rest help with that? Or? Yeah, every time you do a long rest, you have a chance to cure it. Which so we'll is. look at that next game. Okay. And you'll make a roll, and we'll see if it's cured. If it's not, and it's still ba it's bandaged up at least, it won't do too much to you. Mm -hmm. um, you can even check off that's treated, uh, and we'll uh, see how it, how it affects you. Okay, cool. Basically, if you ever, I think, get critted on, um, it might open up again, or become worse again, Oof. and need okay. more treatment. But it can go away, though, right? Yes, it can. On long rest, you'll make a, a roll and see if it goes away. Okay, cool. cool. Woo! Woo! Um, cool. So, Come what do you guys on. think? Do you want to do our little, like, stars and wishes thing we usually do? Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. JC, you can start. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love that the singing worked. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, I had a certain point where I was like, I have to. It's yeah. too good. Yeah, yeah, the singing was wonderful, and, like, I know that was a thing from character creation that, like, I don't believe has come up yet in three episodes. So like yeah. when it finally came up at that moment, I was like, oh my God, the singing. I was yes. really hoping for dire moment singing <laughs> and it just, <sighs> yeah. we got to experience it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, wish, I don't know, not to have fucking crush rich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed it when it happened. It would have been even more dramatic. I forgot when yeah. you go down to zero, you get an injury. Yeah, no, no, no. Actually, that's cool. That's not that's not a legit wish that because that's part of the game. Um, I don't know. It was. Uh, I, I don't know. It if it opens up, you just get exhaustion. Just a level of exhaustion. Okay. Okay. Cool. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> what about you, Brianna? Um. So I really. <laughs> I also really like the singing, um, but <laughs> no, I it's really good. I like the the like little moment that we had, like with uh, Silvara, like after you know she tried to murder the shit out of us. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of shocked that you were willing to let that go at all. You know, <laughs> I just really like the opportunity to use my soothing beans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who doesn't? You know? Uh, and uh, which is... I don't know. I don't know. I, I just really enjoyed everything, so... Mm. Um, yeah, I... Um, uh, we we I really liked um, I loved the moment of us holding the egg hostage and everyone sort of coming together for that. That was super dramatic. Yeah, that was really uh, tactical well tied, and awesome. Um, teleporting away as soon as the uh, the dragon swept in was I thought amazing. Like I thought yeah, that sort of I mean it changed the whole tone of the battle in a lot of ways actually just with with what followed after. But I thought it was um, you know it was it was a really creative solution to the combat and it was a, a really neat moment that I feel like doesn't come up in combat all that often like, you know it was um it's uh, it's great when something like that comes out i thought that was really amazing um the wishes i don't know i'm i mean yeah it's i'm coming out of like two combat heavy episodes now i'm like really craving the opportunity for more inner character uh yeah, interaction and like and like a bit more like low stakes inner character uh sort of interaction where we're Wait, still kind of rushing forward. You know, like, like almost dying all the time. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> um, it's you know, I, I I like I like the RP stuff a lot, and yeah. um, the um, the there's uh, less call for it when there's like sort of real pressing concerns, and I and obviously like that's what the game's all about, and that sort of brings out the RP in a lot of ways. But I'm I'm excited for some of that low pressure RP to come back again too. Sweet. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like I guess it's like a lot of the same as well. Uh, like what everyone else has been saying. Like mm-hmm. uh, I really love the different like sort of a like clutch moments that we had in like the combat, um, and also this like that singing thing was like really fun. Um, just as like an aside, as like part of a wish is like I wish I like actually did the thing I was meaning to and like write down some like lyrics so that I can just like (laughs) do like the like little like maybe like this is what you know while tide singing um but even just like describing what was going on and stuff was uh was a lot of fun and I really loved that like we're starting to get these like dynamics that are like solidifying a little bit Mm -hmm. more of like how our like like character pairs do things so like yes. Welltide and Kanaima are like the comfort duo like <laughs> going into like weirdly just, yeah. just, weirdly, just the like, spirit of vengeance yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and um, there's just like a lot of fun moments like that and like mm-hmm. Welltide and um, Andrew being kind of like this sort of like balance between like reason and yeah. like yeah and, like, like good emotion, hearted, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. emotion yeah, like yeah, good yeah. heartedness and stuff like that and um it's it's cool as well because it's like you can see that both of their characters they're not like just directly opposed like no. they're both coming from a good place so i really like that mm-hmm. um and for me that kind of gets more into like the same wish that you yeah. had it's just like i'm actually looking forward to our next like more yes, like totally. just you know simple character interactions and i think those will those kinds of interactions will like bring more meaning to all of our like high stakes yeah. stuff. So like I feel like the high stakes stuff that we've had lately has been like really good, really fun, and um, you know that yeah. first session was like a really good build up to all of that. Yeah, and, um, it's had a nice peak. It needs to have a little bit of a dip again. Yeah, yeah. it was intro. Just kind of speaking towards what you, what you were just saying, the um, I was going to this session anticipating because there was this little bit of a dynamic at least starting to form with uh, Welltide and Andre, where sort of we share, like our characters share a lot of very similar DNA, but mm-hmm. then have sort of taken it in very, or interpreted it in very different ways and have been shaped into yeah. these very different people. And I was fully expecting what was going to happen in this combat was sort of like, this is where we make the hard decisions and this is where we have to kill this beautiful thing. And that's mm-hmm. what it is. And I was shocked, like pleasantly surprised that like the the resolution ended up being a very sort of, pacifistic sort of one. Yeah, um, very well-tied yeah. resolution. Yeah, yeah, very well-tied mm-hmm. resolution, which Andrew was not expecting and sort of like well is going to have an effect. Shocking. Yeah, it's <laughs> turned out that way, kind of, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it, like, actually, yeah, mm-hmm. I like that too, because, like, out of character, I was just like, oh no, we're going to have to kill this beautiful creature, mm-hmm. and, like, this is going to break well Tide's heart, yeah. and we somehow managed to not do that. And yeah, yeah. I was happy that I was actually able to also just, like, play well Tide in a way that like was still true to her character because she didn't just go like all right attacking things now right away she i don't think she used a single attack spell that combat if i just like recall the, correctly no like just yeah, just yeah. yeah like, all of it was just control and yeah. like mm-hmm. trying to end combat type <gasps> things and it was all like kind of helpful for moving mm-hmm. that around and i was just true. like okay cool Ooh, it wasn't a detriment yeah, yeah. <laughs> just pause one second mm-hmm. what happened to the sleeping soldiers 
Well, they were magical I sand. I imagine they were Yeah, just... they dissolved back into sand. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it was indeed <laughs> they were controlled that by was, her, like, yeah. summoning yeah. them? Uh-huh. We, okay. we, like, cut back to these, like, adorable They're little sand sleeping. soldiers just, like, yeah. sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. One They're of them still has asleep. Their They're yeah. still asleep forever. One of okay. them's, like, sucking their thumb. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Slit their throats when we leave. <laughs> no. no. I, like, I like this game. You guys took a really colorful approach to a combat that was really fun and really mm-hmm. interesting. Like, I, I don't know. It was, like, one of the only combats I've ever done that went into round seven and I wasn't bored. Mm-hmm. Like I was looking at the time and I'm like we have to cut for a break and I'm like this combat has been an hour and a half and it cannot be two hours mm-hmm. so I'm like we have to cut it but like that was one of the more fun combats I've ever run in yeah. D&D mm-hmm. and I'm happy with how you guys use the terrain I'm happy with it like there was just enough to grit to give you something to work with um, it, it felt dynamic too which like yeah of, it changed yeah. a lot yeah because yeah. a lot of D&D can, uh, like combats or whatever that I've been in mm-hmm. are like okay the ranger is like literally every turn just gonna be like arrow 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 and you know this person's doing their like Kendrick Kendrick or whatever you know like and it, it can be just like very samey whereas this yeah. one like yeah. moved around a lot like mm-hmm. the pacing was changed even was, a rogue who is like all melee physical damage was like doing something different all the time like yeah. you weren't yeah. just doing the same thing you were were thinking about positioning you were jumping in jumping out you yeah. were readying actions like you really make like a very martial type character which is going to be so samey to play <laughs> very interesting and I love yeah, that yeah I really I really like the combat for that mm. I've never actually like done like seven rounds of combat and not been like be over. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I'm, I'm going like, to steal this at some point. These, yeah. This like level thing um, was so clever. Yeah, it's from uh, it's from Fate Core. If, oh, you, uh, if you've ever played Fate Core, it has uh, something similar, which is like you just divide the combat into zones, and you'll say it takes like one move to go from <laughs> zone to zone. If you want to go two zones, you have to use your entire turn like as a dash action. So it fits really well D&D. Mm-hmm. And then I just like to think of characters either... Like, you're in melee with something or you're not, you know? Mm -hmm. You're at risk of opportunity attacks or you're not at risk, and I kind of divide it. And you can, like, do different zones and draw a zone and write, like, plus two AC if you hide here. Like, it's just very... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it keeps it in... Like, you can imagine it however you like in your head, and this just keeps it conceptually very clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I actually, like, as someone who's been playing, like, D&D that's always on a grid map Mm -hmm. and been, like, really reliant on that, I've actually found the theater of the mind, like... To be easier than I thought it was. This is my first time ever doing it. This yeah. yeah, and like, it was great. and even with this like multi-tier like level thing, I was like, this is this is good. This is like enough. Yeah. And like, um, yeah. So like, I actually really appreciated that as like yeah. a new experience. And awesome. Um, another like just quick thing to play off of like how dynamic that battle was. Mm-hmm. Like, it just. It was just really impressive how, like, also everyone just, like, kind of got onto the same page, like, characters doing different things. Like, mm-hmm. the fact that everyone is, like, at one point taunting to, like, yeah. take mm-hmm. the attention off. Like, I just, yeah. like, loved watching that strategy. And it wasn't a strategy of, like, stack this damage type with this damage type. It was just, like, mm-hmm. a different kind of strategy. I think and a I little really bit of that, that comes from the improved initiative system we are using. Like, where yeah. you just, like, you're handing off turns to each other because it instantly gets you in the mindset of like what's everyone else doing Mm -hmm. and it means when it's not your turn you're still like paying attention and you're still like oh what do I do whereas I find when I'm in like a standard initiative and I'm just like oh I just gotta wait for my turn again in this round it's like very like Mm -hmm. you can just like turn off for six turns and then kind of come back Mm -hmm. in and in this one you can't you never know when you're gonna go um yeah yeah it was yeah like a seven turn combat and I was at the on the edge of my seat the whole time. Yeah, I know it was awesome, good. and I'm really excited. Next round, next side game, we'll definitely have a little bit of a more uh, researching and picking your next locale. We've conquered this mini dungeon. I've got one or two more that we can probably get through while we do this stream, and uh, yeah, I'm excited for it to be low key and build up again. Yeah. Do we know what day we're doing it next time? Nope, not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll have an update for you on when the next game will be. If uh, It won't be a Wednesday, it looks like, but it might be a Tuesday or a Thursday but or a Friday. But it will be next week either but way. But it will right? be next week either way. We got this. Um, <laughs> so uh, stay tuned to this channel. We'll be posting social media updates for the next game. And uh, as always, thank you for joining us at Can We Play Already? Uh, I'm Julian. I've been your DM. Thank you. Check out my wonderful players' Instagrams and social media. We're all quite awesome. Um, Yeah, anyways, have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.